Hi everybody, this is Sonia, and I hope everyone's doing great today. Um, I'm here to do a tag, and it is by Carolina, and it is called The Fun Little Tag, and there's a lot of great questions on it. So, let's go ahead and get started. Um, number one, how do you arrange the flush you are using on a project? Well, right now I'm basically doing kits. So, the projects already come with all the floss, and I do dimensions, so their floss is already separated. So, that makes it really easy to do. But what I do when I did Tank the Bulldog, that was a project that I had to get my own fabric and get all the floss that I needed. So what I would do is I pull it from my um, floss holder and I get baggies and I separate them by color in the baggies and then I just pull them from the baggies lay them out and then keep them out until I'm done using that particular color. So that's how I arrange to work on a project. Um, number two, have you attempted to dye fabric? If so, what methods did you use? If not, is there any particular method you want to try? Uh, no, I have never um, dyed fabric. Um, I am not really interested in trying to dye fabric. Um, I would much rather just buy hand dyed fabric from some someone else, someone that I have heard about, you know, on floss tube that, you know, is really good and stuff like that and support them and because I am not interested in dyeing. Um, number three. If you use a needle threader, is there any specific type you prefer? No, I'm um, old school. I just lick my floss and put it through the needle. Um, I have never tried a needle threader, but I, you know, just figure um, doing it the way I do it, it works for me. So, no, I have never um, tried a needle threader. So. That's the only way I know how to do it. Um, number four, if you use any type of frame to stitch, do you stitch with the fabric over the frame or in the well? Over the frame. Um, number five, do you start your threads in the front or back of your projects? What methods do you use? Um, I start mine through the back. I start in the back and pull up through the front and I will leave a little tiny tail and then as I'm working my stitches I work the tail in at the back so that there is no tail uh, you know sticking out whatsoever um, so that's how I do that um, let me see number six if you are a gritter what is your preferred method of gritting well, I have never um, did any sort of gritting. Um, I'm not really interested in gritting, but if there ever was a project where I had to grid, then yes, I would learn um, how to grid so that I would be able to do that project. Um, number seven, what is your favorite ways to finish projects? How I like to finish them is framing. I find that framing really showcases your projects. It really finishes them up, makes them look complete. Um, I've seen a lot of them on floss tube that when they have their pictures in the frames, with the mats, or even without the mats. Everything just looks so put together. You know, it, it looks like artwork, which is what, you know, what um, cross-stitch is. It is 
artwork. And so to display it in a frame and have it on the wall, it just completes it. So that is how I do it. And I don't really want to do pillows because, you know, they're, they'll get dirty and stuff like that. And I might consider wall hanging at one point, but right now I'm just basically framing. Okay, let me see. Number eight. What was your first cross-stitching milestone? My first cross-stitching milestone was in 1988-89. That's when I picked up my first cross-stitch project, which was the baby hanger. And I completed it. I gave it as a gift, and that person still has it to this day. So that was my first attempt, and I succeeded in it. My second one, I would have to say, would be Tank the Bulldog. Because that one, I had to get the picture. I had to put it through a cross-stitch um, website to get the pattern. Then I had to figure out my fabric, which was even weave. And then I had to come up with all of the floss and then cross-stitch it. So that was a very, very big step for me at that point. But that was also a success, and it was also given as a gift as well. So those were my two milestones. Number nine, what is a stitch goal that you have, something you want to conquer? I would love to one day be able to cross-stitch a Mirabilia or a Lavender and Lace. I love both of those. They're both beautiful. So that would be what I would want to conquer, would be a Mirabilia or a Lavender and Lace design. Uh, number 10, what is your silliest da moment, stitch moment? Well, this happened not too long ago. I was cross-stitching. And I was supposed to cross-stitch. I was half-stitching. So I was going and I was half-stitching. And all of a sudden, after I did quite a bit, all of a sudden it hit me. Oh no, you are supposed to be doing cross-stitch, not half-stitch. So I had to go back and, you know, redo a pretty good section. And I don't know what made me realize, I don't know if it was because it was going so quickly or what, but something made me, you know, stop, look at the pattern, say, oh no, I did something, you know, that was kind of silly that, you know, but anyway, I caught it and everything was good. Um, Number 11, if you use paper charts, do you print them at home or use a service? I print them at home. Um, I'm able to do it because I do have a printer, and it's just easier for me just to print them at home, where I can do it free with a lot of patterns instead of having to pay a service to do them. Um, number 12, how do you mark, how do you mark your paper charts if you use them. Okay, the only way that I will mark a chart is if I am going to leave my project for a while. And I use a pencil and I will mark, I'll either circle around the stitch that I will work on next or I will put a dot by it or a square around the symbol where I will be stitching next. So when I come back, I know that that is where I'm starting. And then I can erase it because I like to keep my charts and if I, you know, if I mess them up somehow or do something, then I would have to get a new chart. So I try not to mess with my charts too much. Number 13, is there a cross-stitch book you suggest? I do not have any cross-stitch books. I am getting enabled 
by seeing all the beautiful cross-stitch books that are out there, but I do not personally own any cross-stitch books. So I cannot really suggest any, but there are a few out there that I am very, very tempted to be getting. Um, number 14, is there anything that you find you are very nitpicky about when you cross-stitch? I am very OCD about unraveling of edges. That just, if I notice that my edges are unraveling, it just, I, you know, I don't know. It like puts me in a panic. I don't know if it's because I think, oh no, that's going to unravel and I'm not going to have enough for my project or I don't know what it is. So I've had that happen to me before where I thought, well, I don't need to put you know, tape around it or anything around it because it'll be okay. It's just a small piece, but it unravels very quickly, especially Ada. Ada unravels horribly. And so now I put masking tape around all my edges. So that is what I always make sure first thing I do. Uh, number where am I? Number 15. Favorite LNS you visited while on a trip if you've been to one? I have never been to a LNS. I don't have an actual one by me, and I do not travel too often, but when I do travel, I have also been enabled that I will definitely be checking out some along the way. I'm even going to try to see if there's any pretty close around to where I live because, you know, by what everyone has said, they have, you know, all kind of fabric and flosses and all kind of stuff. And I would love to visit one and support one. Um, okay, last one. Is there anything you do that you feel takes up a lot of time when you cross-stitch but is worth it in the end? I would say it is the ironing and washing of the fabric. Um, yes, it does take a little while to wash it, lay it out, let it dry, iron it, but the end result is so worth it. Um, it brings it all together. It um, brightens up your piece that you have worked on for so long. And, you know, it makes it ready for the next step, which is framing or hanging or making a pillow or whatever you want to do with it. So, anyway, that is the questions. Thank you, Carolina, for doing this tag. It was fun. I enjoyed doing it. Um, thanks, everybody, so much for watching. And everybody, have a great day.